Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin here with John Furrier. This is day three of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of VMware Explorer. John and I are pleased to welcome back one of our alumni, Mudu Sudakar, CEO of Isera. Welcome to the program, Mudu. It's great to meet you. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Thank you, John. Great to see you again. You're like an industry analyst coming on theCUBE. You should be like a guest analyst breaking down. I know you got your own company run, and by the way, the recent funding you had, congratulations, you. Uh, in a market that's not getting a lot of funding. You got an up round, congratulations on that. Thank you. Business is good. Very good, thank you for, I mean, look, Goldman Sachs investing, along with Zoom, and Tom Abrao, it was great for us. Great stuff. Again. Well, I'm glad we could get you in. This day three, Lisa and I, and Dave Vellante and Dave Nicholson have all been talking to everyone for two days here at VMware Explorer, formerly VMworld, our 12th year, covering their annual conference, as you know. And we've been talking to the executives, but day three is more of like, we're going we're gonna to mix up. We're going to bring people in and get their opinions and about SuperCloud, where does VMware go post-Broadcom? Obviously, that's going to happen. Looks like that's, nothing's going to stop that from happening. What's next? What's the impact? Who wins? Who loses? VMware certainly not acting like they're going to get gutted. They're like all full throttle ahead. They're laying down some announcements. vSphere 8, you got vSAN 8, they got Cloud Native, they're talking multi-cloud. VMware's not looking like they're flinching. What's going on in your view, outside of the bubble that we're here in, in, in San Francisco, out in the real world in the trenches, what are people talking about? What do you see? Lot, lot, lot to unpack. <laughs> Start <laughs> wherever you want. Yes, uh, is, you know I was a VMware alumni too. Yes, you sold VMware. the company to VMware. You know the inside. Okay, so then even I better. worked with Paul and Pat and Raghu, so uh, it's well, I mean, uh, great to be back at VMware now. Uh, I think there's a lot going on VMware. VMware is here to stay. The brand will stay, the VMware customers will stay uh, for years to come. I think Broadcom and VMware is, I think it's a great uh, industry consolidation, right? The way in which I see it. Um, and it's going to help all the customers too, right? Broadcom having such a large uh, foot play into both CA, the software business, the hard, uh, hardware business. I think what will happen is Broadcom will try to create a, a hybrid cloud of their own with VMware. So there'll be a fourth player in the cloud industry. And that back to John, your super cloud. The super cloud, by definition, there'll be private clouds, public clouds, hybrid clouds. I think broad compass VMware will help your vision of the super cloud and what customers are asking. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I want to get your thoughts on, Lisa and I were talking yesterday with the executives, AJ Patel in particular, he comes from, he's a middleware guy. Right. So he did was at Oracle, he did a lot of the fusion stuff at Oracle, he's at now run modern apps. And you came in at the time, I think, when they were just getting that kind of That's app right. vision going. And Paul Moritz actually had it early with his 2010 vision, but too early on the app side, but that ended up happening too. So, right. so the question is, is Broadcom going to be this middleware layer? I mean, and treat the cloud like hardware, and then apps are apps, companies are apps. I mean, in a digital transformation, technology is the company. Right. So the company is the app. That's right. Uh, is an application. So apps and hardware, middle, a middleware model emerging. Do you think they're going for that or is that, am I just making this, this up in my head? No, I think to me, I see Broadcom as much more like, they're like a PA company at high level, right? So they're funded by- Like a private like, equity company. Private equity company. You mean from a dollar standpoint? From a dollar point. So Broadcom is going to fund companies, they're going to buy companies, they bought CA, they bought all the other assets. So Broadcom will have always hardware. The middle level could be VMware, but they also have CA. Right, they have a bunch of apps here. So I see the Broadcom is also using VMware to run applications. So the consolidation will be, they'll create a super cloud using VMware. They're going to own their own apps. I don't think Broadcom story is stopped yet. It's a journey to come. They're going to buy more acquisitions, more apps companies. I won't be surprised in the future they buy Zendesk. I won't be surprised if they, in the future they buy other apps companies, SaaS companies and cloud enterprise companies, right? So that's where the P is coming. So the Broadcom vision is, I need a base middleware like you're saying. There's no other middleware on top of hardware better than VMware. So do you think that they'll keep the stuff that's coming out of the oven? Because we've been speculating on theCUBE this week. They have the core business, right. but there's all this stuff that's kind of coming out of the oven that's not EBITDA oriented yet. Do you think they keep that or they let it go? I think that's a great question to Hank, their CEO of Broadcom, <laughs> right? But to me, it's, I think knowing them, they are going to keep, and like if you look at Symantec, they kept parts of Symantec, they sold parts of it. So I think uh, all options are on the table for them. Right, they'll do whatever it is, but I think it has to be the ones that high growth companies, they may give it. It all goes back to is there a profitability or not. But his vision is very good. I want to own the middleware, right? He will own the middleware using VMware to your vision, create a super cloud and own the apps. So I think you'll see Broadcom is the fourth vendor in the cloud race. You have Microsoft, AWS, Google, and Broadcom is actually going to compete with these four. So you think there'll be a hyperscaler 
they'll be in the top three or four. They'll be top four. Okay. And, and along with Oracle now, it will be. So now you're talking about the five vendors will be Amazon, Azure, yeah. Google, Oracle, and Broadcom. I, we had an Amazon guy on, Steve Jones, I should have asked him that question. Uh, I just don't see that happening yet. I mean, they have to have the full hardware side. How do you see that coming in? Because I mean, Amazon's innovating at the atom level, and they're working on stuff that's physical, transit, physics stuff. Right. Like down to the root no, level. I think Broadcom will figure out, look, they own the chipset, right? At the end of the day, they also have a lot of chipsets to supply to both mobile and this, so if there's anybody who can figure out the hardware, it will be Broadcom. That is their core of area. Uh, they didn't have the uh, core in the software and the middleware. VMware is going to give them the OS, the Kubernetes, the VMs. Once you have that layer, I think you can innovate both up and below, right? So I think, John, I think Broadcom VMware will be a, a force to reckon with. And I think these guys are going to get into healthcare space though. See, if you see the way the battle, you and me are talking, Lisa, like Microsoft bought Nuance, Oracle bought Cerner, they all paid 30 billion each. So the next battleground will be, they'll start with in the healthcare industry. Somebody's going to go look at the healthcare apps like Epic, right? Uh, they're going to look at the how we can do the hospitals, uh, they're going to look at uh, uh, hospital healthcare professionals. That area will be disrupted a lot in this side. What other industries do you think besides healthcare are ripe for disruption with Broadcom VMware? I think endpoint management. Like remember VMware bought AirWatch when I was there back then, right? That whole area is called digital experience management. So that endpoint management will be disrupted. So Broadcom with VMware will go again into endpoints. I'm talking about endpoint could be the servers, desktops, VMware, Macs, right? Virtual desktop, VDI. So that whole management of mobile devices to desktop, that whole industry will be disrupted. It's a lot of players are there trying to do more consulting services. I think VMware has a great assets and tools. If I'm Broadcom, my chipsets are going into the endpoints. So it's a, that area will be disrupted a lot with Broadcom and VMware. You know, one of the things that VMware has been, people have been talking about is that the CA acquisition that Broadcom did was the playbook's public. Everyone saw what they did. They killed sales and marketing, they killed all the execs, um, metaphorically speaking, they took things, fired them. VMware's got a different vibe here. I'm feeling like it could go one way or the other. I think they should keep them personally, but you don't know. I mean, if they're a PE company, they're EBITDA driven, maybe it's just simply numbers. Right. If that's the case, then I'm worried. But if but VMware's got pride, they got mojo, and they got expertise in software. Maybe a little bit different circumstance you're What's your take on this, is, or do you think it's going to be black and white to the numbers? I think the, uh, knowing Hank, Hank's playbook, he knows what he's going to do, right? His playbook will be consistent with semantic. Do you think he already knows what he wants to do? I think so. I think at that level, both with Silver Lake and Broadcom, they already know a playbook. At this stage, the game is, all, people already know their game. It's like a chess move, they already know. They'll look at broad, uh, broad VMware and see which assets to keep, which one not to keep, which uh, organization, but I think Hank is a master at this, and uh, I think, to me, I'm personally excited with the VMware Broadcom combination. It's a great thing for the industry. It's great for VMware and VMware customers and partners. Well, John, you, you and Dave had a chance to sit down with Raghu. What were some of the things that he unpacked about the Broadcom acquisition? I mean, he was on talking points. He, he, he was on message. He was saying the things that any CEO was going to make uh, a lot of cash on this deal. Um, and he's proud. I mean, I think it wasn't about the money for him that I sensed that he's certainly going to make a lot of cash on this deal as an executive. Um, but he's a longtime VMware employee and a, and a well-loved and revered person. He's done a lot of great work, uh, technically set the agenda. Um, so I think he's just like, I think their mindset is, we're going we're gonna to just continue to do an amazing job as VMware as we are and then let Broadcom, let the chips fall where they may, and hopefully, if they do a good job, maybe they'll either refactor some of their base plans, or they laid it all out in the field, so to speak. Um, so that's my, my vibe. Now, specifically, he made some comments like, yeah, we're really proud, and, we, and, and he's staying technical. He's still like, this is really happening. So I think he's like, he's going to essentially, till the very end, be like, cross cloud, and hybrid cloud, this is our third generation. So there, he's hanging on to the VMware third act that they're saying, and he hopes that it comes home. And I think he's going to just deal with it. He's, he, didn't, he didn't seem flustered, and he didn't seem overly confident. Okay. Um, I guess that's my opinion. I mean, wow. What do you think? I mean, I didn't look, I personally work with Raghu, work for Raghu, so I, I think of him as the greatest CEO for VMware ever could have, right? It's a journey, it was Paul Morage, then Pat Galsinger, now Raghu. I think he's in the right place, right time, to lead VMware, and. Raghu is doing the fantastic yeah. job. Yeah. And personally getting these two companies married, I think Raghu did the right partnership with Broadcom. So. Well, I mean, I think if this events any indication of their 
if they're just sitting back and, and waiting. They're not, and this event was well done, it was pulled off, right. the branding's amazing, I thought they did a good job with the name change, and then in light of all the Broadcom ex, uh, issues, the execution was great, I mean, it was not a bad show here, I mean, it was a good show, it wasn't terrible at all, people were excited. I think the ecosystem also felt that Broadcom, like, a, like an electronic shock to the system, like something's going to happen, <laughs> let's wait and see. I'm going to go to the event to see if it's going to be around, and kind of getting a, a feel first party in person, what's happening. Again, remember, VMware didn't have an event since 2019. This is a community that Ooh. thrives on physical face-to-face -face camaraderie, community, and so I think the, the show was a success. And I, I think, think that's so a too. result I agree, I agree of Ragu and the team. Because we have a booth there for Isara, right? My company, we have a booth. I mean, we are offering coffee and donuts. You guys should come by and <laughs> tell people, like, if we get a free coffee and a donut, but it's one of the best shows I've seen. So I think people after pandemic are back. People are interacting, we are like 500 people in one day at our booth, so nice. for a startup company like us, getting that much crowd is unheard of, so it's great. The, vibe, really excited. the vibe from the partner community, I had a chance to talk with a lot of partners, AWS, uh, NetApp, right. Rackspace, really seems like the partnerships side of VMware is very, very strong, yeah. and the partners are excited about what's next for VMware. Did you t have a chance to talk with any of the partners? Absolutely, look, I'm actually meeting with Karen. So Karen Egan is my contact at VMware too. And Sumit, Mohit, a bunch of the customer success organization. We talk to people in their uh, digital experience management team. I mean, we are very excited to be partnered with both VMware is customer, partner, in all aspects, right? Uh, I'll need the VMware ecosystem for my company to thrive. So for us, VMware customers are my customers. And leveraging VMware APIs, integrating with VMware, that's, that's important for us. Lisa, that's a great question because that brings us to the question of, okay, clearly this show also proves to us from our conversations and exploring the floor, the wave is coming, this next cloud wave is here. We're calling it super cloud, whatever you want to call it, it's coming and it's real and people know it. And also the lines of sight into economics around where people can fit in this next level ecosystem is becoming clear. So I think people kind of know what's the, what's the right side of the street to be on in this next shift. So that's coming, that's independent of Broadcom. So the floor represents to me the excitement for not only the VMware workload powering software with or without Broadcom, but the next wave. So the question is, if Broadcom goes down their path and Hank does what he does, who wins and who loses on where things flow? Because this energy is going to flow somewhere. Is it going to flow to AWS? Is it going to flow to Microsoft? Is it going to flow to HPE with GreenLake getting some great traction? NetApp's doing great, we just heard from them. Um, so the partners aren't, aren't, aren't hurting, it's only going to get better. I mean, reInvent's right around the corner, that's a, that's right. that's a packed house. Their ecosystem's growing like a weed. Um, who wins? Because the customers at VMware are enterprise customers. They're used to being serviced. They have sales reps from Microsoft, they got sales reps from Hewlett Packard Enterprise, real senior enterprise stakeholders there. So someone's going to end up filling in as VMware settles into their broad composition, who wins and who loses in your mind? A very good question. So my thing is, I think it's, I, I put Microsoft and Amazon the winners. In that way, actually, even Microsoft will win because in a true a super cloud, your vision back to hybrid cloud, on-prem and public cloud, VMware disruption will, with Broadcom, as if there's any wedge in the market, Microsoft will take advantage of that, Azure, right? Amazon VMware is there, then you have Google and VMware, so I think Azure will probably try to take advantage of this, but very next will be Amazon, right away there. That leaves you with Google Cloud, right? Google Cloud is the one. So they are the people that they are the people have to figure out what to do in this equation. And then obviously the other one is Oracle. Oracle has no horse in this game. So the, to me, the people who are going to probably lose or impact more will be Oracle, if the Broadcom and VMware will happen. So it's Azure, Amazon winning the race, probably Google is right behind them. Oracle will be distinct. Uh, it's even more, other side is Dell. Actually, Dell has no game in this. I mean, our Broadcom and VMware, Dell should be the one. Dell Who's might have a little secret sauce on the table with Michael Dell. That's true. If he doesn't share, convert his share, if he converts his shares, he might be the largest shareholder of Broadcom. That's true. He could end up owning all the back. So he may be the winner, <laughs> all the things. <laughs> <laughs> Don't count him out. Well, this is a good question. I want to just du double click on this. So you get customer dynamic. Where do they go? You get the community which is a big force multiplier in this world. And if you had to bet on community between Microsoft and Amazon Web Services, Amazon trumps Microsoft on force multiplier community. Uh, ecosystem, AWS beats Microsoft um, on that one. So, so 
It's interesting because it's now multiple dimensions we're talking about here. It's customers, right. now that's the top order, right? right? Like the customers. But also you got community, the people who put on sessions, the people in the community that are the influencers that are like leading the trends and, and developers are very trending relative to what kind of code they use, what's their environments. So the developers is changing that landscape and ultimately the ecosystem of partners. There's a lot more overlap between AWS and, and VMware's ecosystem right. than there is between Microsoft and that, and HPE is just starting an ecosystem. So it's going to be very interesting. It is, it is. I think it's, you know, as I said, I said, Broadcom and VMware cannot be any best time for the industry, right? As you said, HP is coming in, Oracle is coming in, and to your point, VMware and AWS were one of the best partners. Now, this is going to create any gap for Microsoft to enter? It's for Azure? Uh, I think that's where the market is saying that it's going to open up a hybrid cloud player for Microsoft to enter. What is to be a tight relationship with VMware and Amazon, right? So people will rethink through their apps, and more importantly, the endpoint to me. See, the key is that, that like you talk about super cloud, nobody's talking about super cloud for the endpoint. You, should, I you, you should mean call edge it, or security? I, not an edge, endpoint. Endpoint could be your devices, laptop, yeah, desktop. Or a right? building or a light bulb like or whatever. Desktop or VDI, desktop services, servers, right? Yeah. So we call it like endpoint cloud. There's no endpoint super cloud. John, that's an area that you should like double click on. Super cloud for the servers is different from super cloud for endpoint. Well, supercloud.world is the URL out there. If you're interested in super cloud, we are adding tracks to that body of work. So we had our event on August 9th, it was a virtual right. event, where Dave's, Dave and I are going to add a data track, that's we're right. going to add a security track, and we should add maybe an, an endpoint workspace that's work. Right. That's a VMware brand, workspace and horizon. So that whole workspace endpoint for super cloud is going to happen. And yes. Right. That kind of deviate from do you the like public cloud. You think are you are you bullish on super cloud? I'm very bullish on super cloud because I myself is running on-prem in VPCs, public clouds, private clouds. Super cloud kind of compasses that. So app should be designed because I don't want to design an app for one cloud. It's not going to work. So it's like how Java came and I can write it on any platform. The idea is you build it on super cloud, run it wherever you want. Right. right. That's exactly it. So what, you, what would you want to see in SuperCloud as it evolves? We were part of this open conversation. This is our point for today. We're going to have a great panel sure. come up later today. We're going to have uh, um, uh, the influencers come on to debate what SuperCloud should or shouldn't be. If you want to add to the contribution, we'll add this into the work, what should, what's needed in SuperCloud? What's table stakes? I think we need like a Java compiler with Java happened for SuperCloud. I build it once, execute it any place I want, right? Using the Terraform, HashiCom script. So what I don't want is, keep building this thing for every cloud. I want to abstract that out. The whole idea of super cloud is how Java gave me the abstraction for hardware 20 years back or 30 years back. We need the same abstraction for the cloud today. Otherwise I'm customizing for VM cloud, I'm customizing for AWS, Azure, Google cloud. We as an application vendor, it's too hard to keep doing it. I have now 1,000 tuners. I don't need 1,000 DevOps people. I need maybe 10 DevOps people. So there's a clear abstraction complexity that industry should develop and your concept of super cloud with everybody thinking that, and it has to start from the grassroots with ecosystem. What do you think about the participants in this abstraction layer? Because someone said on theCUBE here this week, the people in the abstraction layer shouldn't be participants in the below or above the abstraction. I think it should be everybody, right? It's all inclusive. It's like, inclusive. you need the apps guys to come in, you need the OS players to come in, you need the cloud vendors to come in, infrastructure, so you need everybody. Okay, let's just say that you were the spokesperson for the super cloud organization. Uh, supercloud.world, how would you sell AWS on why it's important for them? It's because they can build it and sell it in AWS in multiple AWS GovCloud, AWS on-prem, VPCs. It's even important for them, for them their expansion, their market time action. If I'm Andy Jesse, if I'm built on SuperCloud, I can increase my time share, otherwise I'm bringing only to public okay, cloud. Okay, so I'll say I'm Amazon and we have a concept called one-way doors. We don't want to go through a one-way door. <laughs> Is SuperCloud a one-way door for them? What's, what's in it for them? Do they get, make more? Does it help their ecosystem? And the same question for Microsoft, Azure, and, and Google Cloud. It's, they make more money. They're, they're making their apps run in multiple places. It's a natural expansion. You're solving your customer problems. If you're Amazon and DJC, my job is give people choices. I give choice to Lisa. Lisa can run it on public cloud. John, you can run it on VPC, uh, AWS Google so Cloud. So you're saying, so you think customers are asking for this right now. Everybody's but, asking. But don't really know how to say it. Customers or are asking, partners are asking. All of us are asking. Okay, what's the ask? Bum, ask is, summarize. give me a one place to build applications and run it anywhere without adding the complexity. Okay, done, that's super cloud. It'll ship tomorrow. <laughs> well, <laughs> good job. All right, well done. Final question for you. Lisa and I have been talking with folks here. 
What advice would you give the folks that are in here? Because we have a lot of active people marketing their solutions and products. They're trying to put a voice out there around thought leadership and trying to figure out where, what side of the street they should be on relative to the next 10 years as they're here at, at VMware Explore, as the next gen cloud comes around. What's the right narrative? What's the right positioning for companies to be on right now for, to be the most re relevant and, and in the flow? I, I think, I don't know about 10 years, right now we are in a difficult economic times, right? Markets are down, inflation is up. So I think the first is cost. People should focus on cost. How can I take cost? Automation is the key, right? Whether you use AI or automation, like you and me are talking, John, last week, right? That's important. Every CIO I talk to is focused on cost. How do I cut my cost? How can I do it with fewer resources? How can I do it with fewer people, right? So the new budget right now is cut your budget in half, so every company, every exec should think about how can you be a good citizen, how can I get growth and scale? How can I do more with less? And that should be the next 12 months. That was a lot of the theme of conversations that I had with the VMware ecosystem doing more with less. So that's yeah. definitely on everyone's minds. Right, and that's what my company is fully focused on. ISRA is all about AI automation. How can we solve your thing? We want to be solving customer problems. We, like, we are like your automation engine for your enterprise, right? We are a platform of platform. That's why I like the super cloud is, I can run ISRA as a platform on top of super cloud. Excellent. Wow, if only we had more time. I know that you guys can, can really dig into super cloud and take it even further. So Thank you have you. to come back, Mudu. I will, uh, he happy to be back. back. He's on the team, so he's contributed to the, to the open source effort of super cloud. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for joining John and me and kind of breaking down your vision on VMware Broadcom and the future. Next, next up, we've got to get some customers on here. I really want to understand what the customer experience is going to be like, but we'll have to, we'll have, to have another segment on that one. We will do that. Thank you, Lisa, for having me. My so pleasure. John, pleasure thank you very you. much. Thank you. For our guest and John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live on day three of our coverage of VMware Explorer. We'll be back after a short break.